This is a free interpretation of a discovery in astrophysics. So here I am, at the line between dark and light, at the very border that separates the side facing the star and the one that remains eternally shaded. It's like being at the edge of the visible world, at the end of the observable universe, in that gray zone, permanent twilight, where the shadows stretch, revealing the whimsical landscape, yin and yang. The noise of the engine fades. I need silence. I step out of the foredeck of my ship's batiscaf, precious package in my hands. The swell rocks me. The wind whips me with such force that I have to grab the ship's rail. Ahead of me, at the bow, stretches the dark side. Like all the planets in this system, Trappist 1E, renamed Nuva by the first colonist, is in synchronous rotation. The same side always facing the sun, it provides a contrasted reality. Eternal night or eternal day, it all depends on where you are, east or west of the Terminator. Behind me, on the contrary, the surface of the deep ocean that covers a large part of this world glistens in the, in the star's dark red glow. By balancing the large differences between the temperature of the two hemispheres, it allowed life to bloom in conditions that initially seemed hostile. After lengthy observation surveys, biological markers were detected on the, in the planet's atmosphere. Water, carbon dioxide, oxygen, ozone, methane. And the TRAPPIST-1 system was selected as one of the destinations for humanity long extrasolar exile. After glancing at my instruments, I moved the mask of my respirator aside. Here, there is no risk. Marine fragrances float in the air. It's 15 degrees. Human perceive the infrared radiation of the TRAPPIST-1 star, an ultra-cool dwarf studied about 400 years ago by astronomers on Earth, more as heat than visible light. But I would only have to venture a few dozen kilometers into the night side for the temperature to drop and living conditions to deteriorate. I look up and see TRAPPIST-1F, renamed Pangu, another planet in the system, so close that it would look like a half moon in the skies of our cradle Earth. Occasionally, from the island when I settled 20 years ago, I enjoyed observing it through my telescope. On the day side, I can make out the cities, Melania, Behor, Altaira. The TRAPPIST-1 system, with its uh, short interplanetary distances, make space opera possible. Traveling from Nuva to Pangu takes a week. A Lilliputian system where worlds are like neighboring countries. Behind TRAPPIST-1F, further still, TRAPPIST-1G, now called Chenong, floats. Its atmosphere, as dense as that of Venus, but less toxic, hides the surface of the planet. But on very rare occasions, the gales that race over the globe grow so violent that they rip through the cloudy cover for a few seconds, unveiling a gigantic structure, the artifact. An IL construction several kilometers tall, perhaps a space elevator or an atmospheric processor. I saw it once the year I turned 20. That event marked my life. Since then, I've been waiting. I'm waiting for the hypothetical day when we will be allowed to set foot on Shenong. For now, that world is off limits. All efforts to land have been aborted. No transmission filter to the thick atmosphere. But they are there. That's it.